Sunsets and sunrises are definitely one of the most popular genres to photograph. I know when I'm looking at images on Clickersnap, there are thousands and thousands of them. So I thought I'd take you out to one of my favourite sunset locations and just do a sunset shoot with you so you can kind of see how I would approach it. Something which I think to bear in mind is that a picture of a sunset, just a colourful sky, is all well and good. It's one thing, you might get some lovely cloud formations or something. But I think it's often better to have a scene with a sunset in it rather than just a sunset. Also, personally, I prefer to get there when the sun is still quite high in the sky because I like shooting at what's called golden hour before the sun has dipped over the horizon. Now, that's not to say you might not get some great shots after the sun has dipped over the horizon. It's just my preference and I would advise you to get there early and understand the location. Try different things. Walk around. Don't be impatient. Also, stay focused on what it is that you're photographing. You're there to photograph a sunset. And if you take your eye off the ball because you've seen something happening way over there and you think, oh, I'll just go and photograph that while I'm waiting for the light to change, you bet your life the light will change while you're over there and you've just missed a little moment which could have been spectacular. I took my eye off the ball making this film because my favourite shot from this shoot, which is this one, I happened to take during one of those intervals and the camera wasn't rolling. It's just one of those little moments, the light was just nice, I'd found a composition that worked and I took the shot and to be honest I didn't actually realise I'd taken that shot till I came back to edit the film and realised I hadn't got any footage to show you how I did it. So don't make the mistakes I did and keep your eye on the ball, be patient, plan your shoot, think things through, try different compositions and different angles. So let's go have a look, I'll show you one I've done. When the sun's low in the sky and the light's coming in at an angle, a repeating symmetrical pattern could look absolutely fabulous if you can use it in a shot, if you can find a location that has some. I'm lucky enough that I know where there is one and I use it on my Lanzarote workshop. We come down here to see if we can photograph sunset. Now tonight we may or may not get a sunset, but what I want to talk to you about is using a repeating pattern because you've got to be very careful when you compose the shot. If you get a symmetrical pattern sort of wonky or off center or kind of on the piss, it doesn't work. It's a really uncomfortable thing. Let me see if I can show you what I mean. So we've got these old derelict windmills going on over here. Um, where is it? Over here. And we've got these nice little pools in the foreground. Now I'm hoping the sun will come out from behind the cloud that is currently hiding it a bit because then it'll give us some more shadows and it will bring out those patterns even more because the sun is very low in the sky. Let me have a look and see if I can show you what I mean about repeating and symmetry. So camera rolling, focus up here, hit up a bit of video. Here we go. Now, right now, with the shot composed so that the symmetry is beginning kind of in the middle and the windmill is just slightly off center. It looks pretty good. The camera is very level with the horizon. But if you kind of put it a little bit wonky like that and the horizon isn't straight, it doesn't look as good. You can sort of edge yourself to the side and maybe use the symmetry. You see, if I put it here, it's kind of uncomfortable by trying to include these old windmills here, it's almost like too much. Less is more. If we come across here, it, it doesn't quite work as well, in my opinion, as it does if I move back over here and pop the corner of these little salt pools right smack in the middle of the composition. So let's have a little go at shooting that one, shall we? <clears throat> How are we going about it? Well, I'm using my 16 millimeter lens. Um, I'm not using a super wide one or anything. I am gonna shoot at about 200 ISO. How much depth of field are we gonna want with this shot? Well, quite a bit because I'm gonna be angling the camera downwards. Let me come a bit closer to you so you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna angle the camera downwards a bit because it makes that foreground stronger when using a wide lens. So we want quite a lot of depth of field, so I'm going to aim for around f16. Where are we going to focus? Not sure yet. We will find out. Um, and we also need to check our shutter speed to make sure I can hold this still, obviously. So, going on what I just showed you in the video, let's see what we can do. So I've got my pool in the middle at f16. All I need to do is focus on the second pool in, I think. Yep, it's about there. That will do it nicely. 
make sure my composition's nice and level and shoot a shot. Now I'm gonna check the histogram because we've got a very bright sky going on over on this side here. And I wanna make sure I've got enough data. My histogram says that I'm bang hard up against the left. I don't know if I can show it to you. Let me see if I can. Let's hold that up close. Yeah, there you go. You should just about be able to see, even though it's a bit out of focus, that my histogram's pretty hard to the left. So I wanna bring it over the other way a bit by brightening up the exposure. So let's dial in, I don't know, two thirds of a stop more exposure and see what we've got. Looks to me like it's pretty good. If I can find my composition again, focus in the same place. There we go and just squeeze that shot. The sun has gone behind a cloud, which is really annoying because it spoilt my light. But now looking at my histogram, it's taken a step to the right. So that's a lot better. I don't know if I can do this for you in the video camera. I'm gonna try because it will make life a bit easier. So if I go, let's see, that way, you see? And then I bring it over See how the histogram has moved a little between those two shots, just saying there's a little bit more data. So if we can get the sun to come out and add some shadows, I think we've got quite a nice shot and it's nice and symmetrical. I'm going to then take another shot looking straight down these lovely symmetrical rows towards the lighthouses. Right, sun's coming out, shadows are appearing. So we don't want to mess around because they may not last long and it's not very strong sun. It's a very hazy kind of diffuse light, but at least there is some kind of shadow going on. So get our focus right. It's about there. That light is just too soft. It's just too soft. In the time it took to walk over there, the light changed. You have to move very, very quickly with light. It won't hang around. Light waits for no man. So I'm gonna stop the camera for a moment until it comes back. No, in fact, I'm not. I'm just gonna step out of the shot and let it roll and see if it pops out behind a cloud, see if you can see it. You know what, that's about the best we're gonna get because there's a huge amount of haze and cloud going on up there and in a moment the sun's gonna hide behind a very large cloud indeed. So I'm gonna take my shot. We have now got just a hint of the cloud, that, of the shadows that I wanted. Let's just take that shot quickly. Again, in the time it took to say that, it disappeared. So I'm just gonna stand here and watch. Here they come, here they come. Just a few little, Bits of shadow, take another one, see if it works. They're there, but they're soft. They are so soft. I take one more and just see if there's any difference. I reckon I should be able to pull them up a little bit in post-production. Let's have a look at my histogram. That's telling me that I think I've got everything I need. Let's just move down the side here and have a look, see if we can get a shot looking straight down through those, see what that symmetry looks like. Okay, so. For this one to work, I'm gonna to have to go and stand on the next little bit over there. So you just enjoy the shot while I just run round there, then you can see what I'm doing. Because I'm not gonna walk into one of the salt pans and spoil all their lovely salt. So here we are. If I'm stood in the middle of your shot here, and I know I'm probably a silhouette, you may not even be able to see me at all well. Let's have a look and see what kind of shot we can take from here. Again, let me roll a little bit of video. Here we go. So darken that down a bit and see if we can bring a bit of life back into the sky. There we go, maybe there. But look, if I'm here, do you see how it's kind of uncomfortable? The lines don't quite line up, but just by moving a tiny bit to the right, suddenly it all kind of lines up and it looks a lot nicer. Also, if it's a bit wonky like that, it just doesn't work. And if you shoot it like this, it's just, it's just kind of uncomfortable in my opinion. Now it's only my opinion, you could use this black line straight down the middle, but I prefer it from over here, I think. So I'm gonna have a go at taking the shot, but I think I'm gonna rotate the camera and I'm gonna shoot it that way up because I just think it'll look a little bit nicer. So stop our video, there we go. And let's have a go at taking the shot. Let's line it up and see what we've got. Now, right now, 
the sun is on the edge of a cloud and it looks really quite nice but that is such a tricky exposure so i'm on f16 for lots of depth of field i'm using a 250th of a second thereabouts at 200 iso let's take a shot make sure all my composition is nice and straight and lined up i'm going to do a landscape shape first just in case I'm going to move a bit to make sure my lines are straight and there's a shot check the histogram histogram says you should just about get away with it we'll have a look when we get these into lightroom in part two now let's just do what i said originally and rotate the camera the other way up and try the shot that way let's make sure those lines coming towards me come into the corners nice and straight get my point of focus good that looks pretty good make sure everything is straight and level i think we're good there and take the shot now if we were really really lucky and the sky were to clear which you can see from those clouds it's not going to we could possibly balance the sun on top of one of those old ruined windmills up there but i don't think it's going to happen i'm going to hang around for a little while and if it does it does and we will come back in and if it doesn't i just want to say i hope that was useful to you and really really practice using your arms and legs and hands and knees when you do your composition think about your shots use your seven building blocks of photography use your camera settings to take your vision out of your head and down through your arms look at that luckiest man in the world the sun has just kind of snuck out from under a cloud and if i'm quick and i'm lucky i just might be able to have it up above the windmill with just a hint of a starburst going on if i use a very small aperture it's not quite going to starburst though because there's too much haze in the air so that's not actually going to work but we have got some really rather nice shadows going on in the salt and a few little sparkles and i love that moody sky up at the top you know what while we're waiting i'm starting to notice more and more interesting shots i've just thought i'd change the camera angle just a little bit so we can have a little look along here i'm just gonna have a little walk along this edge and see what happens because what I'm seeing right now is that the sun is starting to get lower. It's starting to drop below that heavy bank of cloud. Let's just roll a little bit of this video for you so you can see what I'm talking about. So, reduce the exposure so you can see it. There you go. There's the sun. There's the heavy bank of cloud. So we might be lucky. We might get some nice reddy orange light glinting off these little pools of salt and then while we're waiting i'm just going to do a little couple of experiments to see if there's anything that can be found now this is quite a nice shot from here um, looking diagonally across here at, at that where is it there it is this old kind of abandoned windmill there we've got some quite nice light going on and i like the way the sky up into this corner is getting very very bright indeed let's have a go at shooting it shall we again i'm going to shoot from here and i'm actually going to include i think am i going to include both windmills no i'm not you know what i don't like it with both windmills but if i was to shoot it from here a similar shot to the one you've got in the video camera let's see if it's doable it is just about so i've got a little diamond shape in the lower left corner let me show you here we go if i was to shoot it sort of from here i don't think it works but if you look in the lower left corner of the frame if i get that lined up nicely corner to corner over that little pool we've got quite a nice little diamond shape going on just there and i think that triangular shape sort of lower left of the frame right at the bottom helps to point our way into the scene into the windmill so let's have a go let's see if we can shoot it sorry guys i'm much too close to the camera but uh, i don't have a camera person i'm down here babbling away on my own so let's see if we can get that shot let's see what our exposure is likely to be lots of depth of field i'm now f18 i'm getting about a 40th of a second should be enough i'm only on a 16 mil lens why am i using f18 i want a lot of depth of field in my shot i really love the moodiness of the clouds let's very carefully move just line up those diagonals here in that triangle and squeeze that shot Let's have a look see what the histogram has to say about it all that looks good it looks really good 
I'm going to take a little walk along the wall here, this one here, there it is, and I'm just going to have a look and see if there's some other shots there while we're hanging out here. You know, we've got to utilise everything we've got, try everything we've got. Here's a thing which I think could be nice. Instead of using the white squares running up through here, how about using one of the black lines as part of the shot? Let's see, we've got to milk the location. We absolutely need to milk the location. Even though the light's very, very hazy, it's not the best light. But let's see if I go a bit lower. I don't want to go lower because that stops me from being able to... Oh, I'm just clipping. Let's have a look in the video. Now, I am just clipping that windmill there into the edge of my frame and I don't really want it there so all I can do is just slightly sneak that focal length out and that will lose it for me and keep those rectangular pulls going on and this leading line running straight down the middle here going up to our windmills. So kill the video, take a shot. Now then let's get my exposure up a little more than I think it should be just extend that focal length a bit get my point of focus we're going straight into the Sun make sure everything's nice and level there we go check the histogram always check the histogram eyes lie histograms don't that's looking good I might just walk down here a little further and try using another set of parallel lines going to the central windmill and see how that looks it's not bad and we're going to go through these when we have a look at them in Lightroom. Exposure should be exactly the same because nothing has changed. I love shooting into the sun, it's just the best. And again, I think we've got a nice shot. This is what we call golden hour. It's before sunset. Personally, I prefer shooting golden hour than I do the actual sunset. Sunsets are okay, they're great, but I do think the golden hour is more dramatic. And if you can get a clean sun and you get a starburst off it, it looks totally amazing. Let's just stop the camera and see what happens in a little while. So I've been down here now, what? 45 minutes, maybe an hour watching the sun go down. And I think as you can see, it has now set behind this bank of low cloud on the horizon. I think there's some quite nice shots in there, so using a bit of symmetry in your foreground can really work well. But you've got to be careful how you use it, and if you can, can combine it at golden hour when the light's good, it starts to look really, really cracking. So if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and share it with other photographers. If you have any comments, we'd love to hear them. Please say something below. If you'd like to be kept up to date each time I post a new video, you can sign up to my newsletter at photographycourses.biz forward slash video. I only send out a newsletter once every couple of weeks, so you're not going to get spammed with loads of stuff, but it will keep you up to date with anything that's going on. So I'm going to head on back. It's getting a bit cold down here. That's why I'm wearing a jacket and I'll see you later. Take care.